doing today is we are making history. We are putting radioisotopes into the horn of Rhino for the first time ever. And the reason to do this is to devalue the Rhino horn in the eyes of end users, but also to make horn traceable as it's moved across international borders, at airports, harbours, border crossings, things like that, where they have radiation portal monitors. You get certain um, molecules which are naturally unstable, or atoms which are naturally unstable, and they want to decay and they give off um, particular um, particles or rays, and in this case they give off gamma rays, which are very similar to X-rays, and we use that as a tracking device, device, if you like, to actually be able to, as a horn goes through a, a monitor at an airport or something like that, this then sets off the detectors and then standard operating procedures kick in. So it's an ideal detection system for us to be able to pick up horn that is being moved across international borders. Rhinos matter because no matter where you are in the world, crime affects a community. And black market crime in particular is horrific. The four major black market crimes are weapons, drugs, wildlife trafficking and human trafficking. Just on the wildlife trade alone, it is valued at over 22 billion US dollars per year and is growing. Black market crime globally is in excess of $2 trillion. Uh, the reason why rhinos are so important in the mix is because their horn is the most valuable false commodity on the black market trade. The vision of the Rhysoto project is that by using nuclear technology, we are going to be harnessing various aspects of anti-poaching and crime prevention that hasn't been done before. By the placement of radioisotopes into the horns of these rhinos, in the event that a rhino with a treated horn gets poached, this means that detection for this animal's horn on the ground is amplified because there are detectors that can be used to pick up that horn, as well as nuclear detection and radiation portal monitors around the world. This is going to increase the risk for the smugglers, either in terms of individual or bags of horns or consignments. Because of the poaching pandemic, I always said to the world press, if I could save the life of one baby rhino, it will be worth it. We have saved the lives of dozens and dozens and dozens of these rhinos. At this pace, we are definitely going to lose a very iconic species. We will in, not in the far future invite people to come and have a look at the big four and we can't allow that. We can't allow that and that is why when uh, Professor James Larkin from uh, Wits University contacted me a while ago and said you know they've got this idea of putting radioactive isotopes in the horn I was at first shocked and thought, what, is it possible? What about the animal and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I can tell you this much, people have tried everything. They've tried to poison the horn, it didn't work. Uh, Dehorning doesn't work. Uh, to legalize the trade, you can never flood a market that you don't know how big the market is. So I think this is an absolute brilliant idea. After a couple of years of sort of fairly careful dose modelling and working with various different organisations, we realised that there is a particular you know, activity concentration and a particular radioisotope that we could use. And so here we are today, we've done our homework, we've done the testing, we've done the modelling, and this is the pilot project. So we are now working with 20 animals, both black and white rhinos, and we'll follow these animals. We've got a team of people who look after these animals on a daily basis.